Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President and uh, Majority Leader. Uh, I'm fully aware of the peculiar situation I am in. This uh, bill having uh, been um, subject of my own committee, but uh, which I am grateful to the Senate President as well as uh, the uh, Senate President uh, Potempore for taking over. But uh, in fact, questions remain in my mind as well as they do in uh, many other Others. And uh, first, I would like to state, uh, quoting the Senate President, that uh, international bodies and organizations such as the ADB, the World Bank, the UNTAD have recognized the immense value and importance of the RCEP, especially in the pre in the post-pandemic recovery. However, it uh, should be observed that the UNTAD itself. Um, in a research paper by uh, Dr. Nishita, indicated that tariff concessions under the RCEP will result in lower exports by the Philippines, completely the opposite claim by the administration. The uh, study shows that the overall effect of RCEP will be a decrease in Philippine exports by $100 million. In another study by Boston University, uh, Rashmi Banga at L, it was shown that Philippine exports will decline by 0.2% and imports would rise by 0.2% at the very least. Even with the sensitive lists of uh, tariff rate quotas, as uh, mentioned by our colleague in the annexes, um, by Senator Chis Escudero, the paper estimated that the Philippines' balance of trade in goods will deteriorate by a minimum of 1.1% or a loss of uh, USD 260 million per annum. So it will get quite a bit worse before it gets any better. All these losses on top of an estimated $58 million uh, in tariff revenue losses annually. Are these figures uh, accurate? Do you have any comment? Because I know the DTI, the DA, and uh, the other uh, economic managers' projections are uh, different. Well, Your Honor, well, thank, first of all, uh, good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. President, I always say the proof, is, the proof in the pudding is in the eating. Uh, all these studies were made prior to RCEP's uh, uh, ratification on all these other countries. But we have seen in the region, Mr. Ch Mr. President, I mentioned it to the yesterday and in my speech last week, exports in RCEP countries increased, particularly Vietnam, 16.4% with a total value of $108 billion. The increase. And, you know, we're trying to catch up with Vietnam because part of Vietnam is now our uh, peg when we try to... Uh, to get foreign direct investments from other countries. It's always either the Viet Vietnam or Philippines ang gusto nilang puntaan. Second, Thailand, Your Honor, it increased by 7.1% in 2022 alone soon as they had uh, ratified their treaty. That's about 300 billion US dollars, Mr. President. Yung, and these are trade to RCEP countries, uh, Mr. President. These are not trade to other uh, nations, Europe or all. These are trade to RCEP countries. In Cambodia, they went up to 4% in 2022. A 31 billion US dollars, Mr. President. And I'd like to take note, there's an increase of 17.6% in exports in garments alone to Australia with a total of 102 million US dollars. The other day, the same quarter, 6.5 million dollar trade deal with Japan on garments. Ito po, 102 million on Australia alone because of RCEP. So unlucky compared to what we were getting in other countries because I presume it is cheaper to produce it within the RCEP family and to export it because of less tariffs. Malaysia, Mr. President, <coughs> exports grew by 25%. Can you imagine that, Mr. President? 25%. RCEP countries... Uh, and in 2022, it uh, accounted for 58% of total trade of Malaysia. And the list goes on, Mr. President. Before you know it, pati Laos, baka matalo pa tayo sa Laos, and even Myanmar, in terms of trade uh, within these countries. So, my, my position there, Mr. President, 
our neighbors are gaining, gaining ground and gaining financially from joining this largest, uh, one of the largest trade agreement uh, areas uh, in our region. And um, there are so many studies here which can go contrary to what uh, the, the lady has mentioned. Damn it, this is two pages long to, co to go contrary the, to what the gentle lady has mentioned. But the, again, the simple, the si simplifying it is that the, our neighbors had gained higher exports from joining RCEP since last year. Yes, so with no desire to argue with our distinguished Senate President, the data provided must be placed in its proper context because even if indeed Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia manifested increases in their trade, the uh, truth is they can't all be credited to RCEP. It means simply that we are trading more actively with our neighbors here in ASEAN. As an example, China-Philippines bilateral trade increased by 8.3% during the first 11 months of 2022, a clear recovery from the pandemic. We were not members of RCEP, but that uptick was very clear cut. Philippine exports to South Korea increased by 16.9% again during the same period of the first three quarters of 2022, where in fact both South Korea and China are RCEP members, and still the Philippines was not. In fact, our increase in trade was greater than these uh, examples uh, stated of uh, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam without RCEP. But, Mr. But, but, but Madam President, just to uh, Mr. Mr. President, let's let's go to the flip side. The flip side is if we don't join RCEP and we stay isolationist in this region, you think the people that we talked to in Japan last weekend with, with the president your brother, will they want to go to the Philippines and expand their, their, their trade here? They can take it to Vietnam. They can take it to Cambodia. Uh, they can take it to other countries that are within the RCEP because it's more advantageous to them. So the flip side there is, okay, because we're afraid that our, trade, our, our exports may go down and therefore let's not join RCEP. The flip side there is all those who want to expand that are already exporting now, We'll just go to an RCEP member country. And I, and I introduced you last week with a company that wants to build 2,000 uh, EV, e vehicles. It's an EVT company. It's the biggest e vehicle company listed in the NASDAQ. If well, Their choice is between Singapore, Johor, or the Philippines. Singapore, why? Because their headquarters in Singapore, the manufacturing will be in Johor. And they held on to the contract signing because they wanted to visit the Philippines. And I brought them here last week. Obviously, it would be more advantageous for them to go to Singapore Johor if we do not join the RCEP because they also want to sell these vehicles within the RCEP regions, not only the United States. So the flip side there is that we don't join RCEP, definitely. Our, our, uh, we will not be able to expand the exports. We will not have a hard time convincing these people to come in and do foreign direct investment in our country. That's the long and short of it. Um, Mr. President, I would like to respond to the chairman of the yes. Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, and, before uh, you embark on your explanation, yes. uh, Senate President Pro Tempore, I'm very grateful for you taking over this bill. Uh, I have uh, deep and immense gratitude for that. Thank you so much. And I just like would like to put on record that I consulted her honor before I took on the responsibility when my name was mentioned as subcommittee chair while I was out of the session hall, but I heard my name being mentioned. And um, as part of the leadership of the chamber, I uh, do not shirk from the responsibility, however challenging. And I asked your honor uh, very clearly, Sen Aimi, whom I regard very highly as knowledgeable, having vast experience in governance as well, uh, what is wrong with RCEP convinced me that I should not take it. And your honor had told me there is nothing wrong with RCEP. It is smuggling. It is the way uh, there's been lack of support for the agriculture sector and similar issues. And so I accepted it. I said, okay, then I will take on that uh, responsibility to the best of my ability and um, then I studied it. But I am grateful 
for the very clarificatory questions that you are posing because these are the same questions I asked during the five-hour hearing and the seven-hour uh, briefing uh, that ensued. Let me just state, uh, Your Honor, that there are many studies on the impact of RCEP, but only the study by Banga uh, shows the negative conclusions. As we mentioned yesterday, there are studies by Dr. Koro Raton of the Virginia Polytechnic Institute, Dr. Kimba of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, and many more. And based on the study of Dr. Koro Raton, there will be an improved trade balance, increased welfare, and lower poverty incidence as early as its entry into force with significant improvements, hopefully, I hope it happens, by 2031. By that year, Your Honor, poverty incidence will decrease, supposedly based on the study, by 3.62%. Real GDP will increase by one percent 93% and reduction in poverty gap by 3.49% and reduction in poverty severity by 3.82%. According to Dr. Kimba, there will be a 10.47 increase in exports and 2.02% increase in real GDP. Of course, I agree with you. These are studies. These are statistics. These are numbers. We can listen to Banga, to Kimba, to several experts here. Um, and I feel for you. I, 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 we share the same advocacies. We've talked about it privately. And yung pangamba nyo, pangamba din po natin. Matutuwa po kayo na meron tayong ginawang uh, bago na innovation and innovation in our concurring resolution, which I will read into the record later, are provisions and resolutory clauses that hopefully everybody, including those who are against the RCEP treaty as is, that will mandate and task our agencies whose cabinet members are present here with us today to work on specific sectors so that whatever possibility of adverse impact on that sector will be buffered by uh, the provisions in our resolutory clauses. So, Diningin po natin, dininig po natin ang hinaing ng bawat sektor. Gaya ng sinabi natin kapon, this is not this is not a magic pill. 33 agricultural tariff lines, 15 agricultural products. We already have various, several ASEAN FTAs. We have two uh, bilateral FTAs. One is with Australia and New Zealand. The other one is uh, JPEPA, which I also voted in favor, by the way, which was also controversial at the time. There was so much pressure also not to vote for it, but it has shown a uh, positive impact. May I just state, Your Honor, before, uh, I don't know if you were in the Senate in 2018, as chair of the Foreign Relations Committee, this representation sponsored the EFTA. And the EFTA, with the non-EU countries, which include Switzerland, had a a uh, negative balance of trade or trade deficit with the Philippines. But after 2018, and it was pandemic, now uh, at present I am told that there is a positive balance of trade or a trade surplus on account of our export of electric fans and vacuum cleaners made in Laguna to Switzerland. And therefore, th there's a trade uh, surplus with the EFTA countries. I wanted, just like you, to be convinced that this FTA we are entering into or concurring into will be beneficial to our country. Pero, aaminin ko po, yung agam-agam ninyo, malaking parte pa rin nandyan sa akin. But we cannot be left behind, as the Senate President so clearly mentioned, because of all the ASEAN nations, we are the only country Mr. President, who has not ratified this. And as I mentioned yesterday, pag merong nag-export ng chocolate mula sa Indonesia, mula sa nagtatanim ng cacao, at binabana ng Japan ang taripa dahil RCEP country siya, papano na yung ating mga gusto mag-export ng chocolate, base na rin sa local cacao natin, kung hindi tayo sasama ng RCEP dahil zero na ang taripa within 16 years, pag RCEP country ka, pag hindi, ay Ma malaki, 24.3%, 23%. 23%. 23%.
ang taripa. Bibilin ba ng mga hapon ang tsokolate mula Indonesia o ang tsokolate galing Pilipinas, uh, base na rin sa cacao farmers sa Mindanao, sa iba-ibang lugar, uh, kung hindi uh, ganung kababa ang presyo. Um, okay. Isang pahayag lang po yan, uh, sabi nga ni Sen. Pre, huwag nang mahaba ang mga sagot ko, kaya lang <laughs> kaya na, eh. ko. Pag kay Senator Marcos, dahil sinangguni ko siya bago tanggapin ko ang aking tungkulin sa trabahong ito na hindi madali. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, respectful of the deadlines uh, imposed upon this House as well as on the Senate President, uh, may I just raise the following questions uh, by way of manifestation that uh, the sponsors may or may not answer. We are uh, repeatedly told everywhere we go that we are the last country to ratify this uh, trade agreement, this treaty. However, the reality is, at the outset, a major economy refused to even join the discussion. Is it not a fact that India did not join RCEP precisely because of concerns similar to ours here in the Philippines on threats of circumvention of rules of origin, issues of trade deficit, and the potential flood of imported goods. We share the same problems with India, except they're much bigger and they're much stronger. And what about that growing trade deficit? Not projected, but actually recorded already in several countries. This is a major concern. But I would also like to mention that the statement was made by the sponsors that adequate safety nets are provided in the agreement to cover unwarranted or exceptional circumstances. May I simply say that these supposedly sufficient safeguards um, are no safeguards at all, simply because the success rate for successfully defending Article 20 of the GATT and the Article 14 of the GATT, the Services Agreement, is less than 3%. A study in 2015 reveals that out of 43 cases involving Article 20 of GATT and Article 14 of GATT, only one was successful. Wala naman dyan nananalo eh. Kaya itong mga emergency measures na sinasabi, uh, parang palamuti na lang at parang consuelo de bobo, pagkat hindi naman nagagamit, hindi naman napapanalunan. Ito nga ang kinatatakutan natin. Meron tayong Senate Resolution on the Concurrence of RCEP, including measures and instructions to government agencies in an attempt to provide additional safety nets to the vulnerable sectors, particularly the agricultural sector. Ito nga ang problema. Nakita natin sa rice tarification law, may fund na sinasabi. Yet studies show that the income of farmers fell by 40%. How do we ensure that the measures indicated will indeed protect the, the vulnerable sectors? Ito nga ang mga problema natin. May bisa ba talaga itong mga safety nets na to? Ginagamit ba natin ng madalas? At talaga bang may epekto? Yan ang tanong ko. At uh, I would also like to put on record the uh, reported uh, conclusion that there are great potential gains for the Philippine agricultural sector. It is not clear how the sector can capitalize on these potential gains, given the sorry state of agriculture in this country. Presently, we're struggling to provide basic agricultural services that were uh, promised as early as 1994 with the WTO. Hanggang ngayon, in the last 10 years, ang compounded annual growth rate of irrigated areas is only 2%. We cannot deliver the basic services. Do we really believe we can deliver the services necessary to make our farmers capitalize and transform into competitive partners in whatever RCEP has to offer? In addition, a good bulk of the potential exports of China agricult of Philippine agricultural products will be destined for China. Given the recent moves by our government, um, which China has specifically um, already um, manifested their uh, disappointment with, 
the additional EDCA sites? Is it realistic to project that China will be buying all our durians? We're already witness to what has happened in the last few years with the Australia-China trade wars. Is this what we want to happen? And also, realistically, the uh, peak of the bearing of the fruit bearing for durian is not tomorrow. It's after 10 to 15 years. Our Senate president knows that very well. He comes from Mindanao. And uh, I believe that uh, we should not make these promises uh, simply because um, we will be fraught to uh, fulfill them. Also, it is claimed that the RCEP uh, will benefit the MSMEs due to a platform called RCEP SME that institutionalizes support and cooperation for them to be integrated in the great global production chain. The truth is Article 14 of RCEP, the single article pertaining to MSMEs uses very vague non-committal words such as encouraging MSMEs, promoting, exploring, by these provisions, are we certain that best practices and trade will in fact be engendered? Is there a sanction? Will they be punished if they don't do this? This is uh, a concern. Lastly, and as I said, I have no desire to torment my uh, peers, most especially my uh, honorable Senate president, but the proponents of RCEP, have stated that joining the trade agreement will result in an increase in electronic exports. But will these reports of uh, electronic exports increases really defray the uh, thousands of jobs already lost in the electronic companies leaving the country due to incentive and other infrastructure concerns. How confident is the DTI at the end of the day that electronic exports will increase due to RCEP, given the reported closures of electronic firms, not only here in Southern Tagalog, but also in MEPSA and other places throughout the country. We are also aware of the loss of jobs everywhere in many of these areas. These are my concerns, and I am grateful to the president, to the majority, for allowing me to put them on record. The sponsors may or may not uh, reply as necessary, but uh, I uh, have to put them uh, on record for the concerned sectors. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, I pre deeply appreciate the points made by our uh, distinguished colleague, Senator Amy Marcos, and uh, just in broad strokes, Mr. President, to just come up with a very short, I'll try to shorten it as possible on the answers. Um, the issue in agriculture, well, first of all, the issue in India. I mentioned yesterday my geopolitical, my geopolitical issue. India and China don't like each other. Actually, they beat each other up every time in the border of India and China. Um, India now is slowly gaining in terms of population. They're actually going to be probably this year the biggest population in the world. Uh, they're going to uh, surpass China very, very soon. And so I think they're worried about opening up their markets to China, which uh, is a more sophisticated, uh, has a more sophisticated manufacturing system, which probably... Uh, they feel in India they cannot compete with, no? especially with the larger population that's growing in India. They might lose out on, on these uh, markets. Um, on the issue of agriculture, Mr. President, marami talaga problem ang agricultura. Marami talaga. From the lack of inputs, the lack of know-how, the lack of training, the lack of modernization uh, of, our, of our equipments and machineries, even land concerns. Kasi... Overlapping po yung issues on land dyan sa agriculture. Napakahirap. Kung gusto po natin, sabihin natin sa San Miguel Corporation, pwede ba kayo magtanim ng 1,000 or 10,000 hectares of land? And I know, there was a Brazilian group that went to the president asking for 10,000 hectares of land to present to the president the real uh, modern way of sugar agriculture to include ethanol and 
biofuels and uh, biomass para four products in one for sugarcane. Alam nyo po, ang totoo dyan, nandyan po si ES, nag-uusap kami dyan, napakahirap maghanap ng lupa dahil ay, uh, overlapping ang mga uh, mga mamayari may, may, nitong lupang ito. Agrarian Reform Beneficiaries, NCIP Communities, talaga napakahirap maghanap ng lupa para magtanim ng uh, ng farms na yun, lalo na corporate farms. And uh, we're very restrictive when it comes to corporate farms because the agrarian reform law is still in, in place and they'd rather give it to beneficiaries rather than uh, our farmers. No, So, I mean, other than uh, corporate farming. I just want to put on record, Thailand spends double in their agriculture than Philippines. Double. So maybe in the next budget cycle, with the help of Senator Aimi, with the help of all of us here, Let's double the budget of agriculture and let's make sure that it goes to the right programs. I totally agree with you. And that's the only way to do it. Um, <clears throat> but I, at least I'd like to point for the record, nandito din sa smuggling issue, nandito si Commissioner Rubio, nandiyan ba? Nandito si Commissioner Rubio to show his, his brand new, newly minted, to show that we are going to uh, weigh in heavily on the smugglers and, and try to apprehend them. So, you lama po, uh, Mr. President, on Briggs, we just doing, I just came out with uh, big strokes and uh, want to thank again the lady senator from Ilocos Norte for allowing me to shortly try to answer some of the questions that she had asked earlier. Maraming salamat po, Mr. President.